thank you very much, uh, Mr. Moderator, Mr. Edward Femin Matoka, Assistant Director General for Priority Africa and External Relations, UNESCO. Assistant Director General for Education, UNESCO, Mr. Fania Giannini, Mr. Bohren Chakrun, Director, Division of Policies and Lifelong Systems, UNESCO. Honorable colleague ministers from respective countries, ladies and gentlemen, I send you very warm greetings from the Gambia, the smiling coast of West Africa. The occasion we are witnessing today deserves a critical review by our various education teams and organizations. Just like the formal education programs in our countries, we should note that adult and non-formal literacy as well deserves our unique and full attention particularly during this COVID crisis that has affected the whole world and education is no exception. I therefore wish to commend UNESCO and UNESCO Institute for Lifelong Learning for organizing this important meeting and inviting all of us to it. I wish also to commend UIL again for technically supporting the recently implemented family and intergenerational literacy and learning project FEEL in the Gambia. This project was funded by the German Foreign Office and to them we register our profound thanks and gratitude. The FEEL project has immensely contributed to boosting the adult and non-formal literacy subsector in the Gambia. It has enabled adult participants to engage in shared learning with their school going children as it enabled them to support, coach and monitor their learning while the children were at home. Out of the many life changing experiences of the project, Participants are also able to send and read simple mobile texts and, perf and perform basic numerical operations, which help them in their daily business engagements. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, prior to the outbreak of the COVID-19 pandemic, we had 177 literacy centers in the Gambia, most of which are located in the rural areas. The participants at the centers are mainly female, constituting 84% of the learners. It is important to note that their literacy activities were needs-based programming. Participants learned basic functional literacy, numeracy, civic education, and indigenous languages. In addition, they are also exposed to disaster risk management, climate change mitigation, and basic life and livelihood skills. The major aims of these programs are meant to empower the participants and give them opportunities for self-employability. My ministry has started to engage participants to help build a more resilient system that will ensure a strengthened environment for literacy activities for the continuity of learning. Undoubtedly, this COVID pandemic has created a need for the opening of new centers as the pandemic situation has impacted dropout rates from formal education. The Ministry of Basic and Secondary Education is determined to work with partners to make sure that those who had left school are not left behind. But this bid will not be without regulating some of the perennial challenges that adult and non-formal education unit 
continues to grapple with, such as low capacity and inadequacy of material resources. As far as the non-formal education landscape is concerned, the following also have been recurring challenges for the providers. These could be listed as inclusion of ICT in adult literacy programs. While even for the school system, there is a challenge of ICT infrastructure, it is, it is essential for the sake of equity to also yearn for a robust ICT facility to support adult literacy. Strengthening the capacity of non-formal education operatives. Literacy facilitators continue to get limited formal training. There's also limited per, uh, permanent structures and furniture for adult literacy centers. This factor, among others, contribute to dissuading learners from attending literacy classes. Ladies and gentlemen, as we speak, the need for non-formal education is greater now than ever before because of the surge that COVID has created on all education system worldwide. And my country, the Gambia, is no exception. Therefore, we are willing more than ever to collaborate with partners in our drive to mitigate the effects of the disruption of learning the pandemic has rendered on our education system, be they formal or non-formal. We are also very much cognizant of the effects that of the efforts that U, UIL has put into the global drive for the attainment of universal literacy, as indicated in the SDG 4.6. We therefore continue to implore the global community to strive for the successful achievement of universal literacy, especially for disadvantaged and marginalized groups. On that note, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you for your very kind attention while it gives me the pleasure to participate in this very important annual general meeting. Thank you very much.